So hello and welcome to this tutorial on establishing relative strength of conjugates. So this tutorial is a little bit different from the ones previously. It's not as uh, quantitatively heavy, meaning there aren't going to be a whole lot of calculations. But it's uh, more of a conceptual approach that we're going to take. And the reason that I'm doing this is because traditionally students have had some trouble in trying to appropriately and properly analyze the conjugates and their relative strengths for these weak acids and bases. So you can see the two substances that we have here are weak bases, and we can confirm this by going and taking a look at their KBs from the charts that we have access to, either in the back of the book or the reference sheet that you've been given. And we can see here that in terms of their KBs, the KB for ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Well, the KB for the hydrazine is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6. So we can see here that just by comparing the two KBs, that the greater KB is going to indicate that the ammonia ionizes to a greater extent than the hydrazine does. That is, when ammonia is placed into a solution, it is going to produce a greater number of hydroxide ions than the hydrazine is. And we can tell that by the extent or the magnitude or the size of the KB. And so therefore, it's going to have greater basic properties and therefore be a stronger base. Now, it's not a strong base, but of the two, it's still going to be the stronger base or it's going to have a higher pH if you want to think of it that way, or by extension, a lower pOH than the hydrazine is. But we're not so focused on these bases. What we are focused on are their conjugate acids. Now, if we're analyzing this in terms of the actual equation itself, we can see that both the hydrazine and the ammonia are going to act as bases because they are going to accept a proton from the acid, in this case is water, and they are going to form uh, the appropriate conjugate acid on the other side. Now, we should note that conjugate acid-base pairs only differ by a proton. So the ammonia only differs from the ammonium ion by one H and one positive charge. And you can see that the, and you can see that the hydrazine differs from its respective um, conjugate acid by only a hydrogen and a positive charge. Similarly, the water differs from the hydroxide ion because of a positive charge and a hydrogen as well. So now that we've identified our acids, bases, and conjugate acid base pairs here, and we can see what the conjugate acids of the bases are, we can analyze them. But if we're going to analyze them in terms of their relative strengths, then what we have to do is compare their Ka's. So much like we compared earlier on the Kb's of hydrazine and ammonia to figure out which one's stronger, we have to figure out the Ka's. Now if you look in your table, you're going to see that you don't actually have the Ka values for either one of these ions. That is, we're going to have to go through and establish them. So we have to remember that Kw, that constant, is going to be determined or can be determined by the product of the Ka times the Kb for any conjugate acid base pair. That is, if we know the Kw and we know one of the Ka or Kbs of a conjugate pair, we should be able to figure out the other variable. So in this case, we know that Kw under standard conditions at 25 degrees Celsius is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 as it always is. We know both the Kbs for both of the bases that we're analyzing, so we should be able to rearrange this equation to solve for the Ka for both of the conjugates. So in the case of our first Ka, we are going to be establishing the Ka for the NH4 plus ion using the Kb of its conjugate, which is ammonia. We're then going to compare it to the Ka of the N2H5 plus ion, and we are going to use the Kb of the hydrazine in order to do that. So to further our calculations, we're going to take the Kw and divide by the respective Kbs of both bases. So in doing so, we're going to get a value for the Ka of the NH4 plus ion is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10, and the Ka for the N2H5 plus ion is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 9. So what we're going to notice is that this value for the N2H5 plus ion is greater than the value for the Ka of NH4 plus, meaning that the stronger of the conjugates is the conjugate of the hydrazine. So in order to figure out which of these two is stronger, we have to compare the Ka of the conjugates. Now it is worth noting that something that is a stronger base is going to have a weaker acid, and something that is a weaker base is going to have a stronger acid, and vice versa. But if you're going to analyze it appropriately, you should complete these calculations in order to figure out which of these two is going to be the stronger ion. 
Now this is going to extend a little bit later on into our discussion of salts, and which one of those two ions is actually going to be stronger. So it's important to note that when we are comparing conjugates, you have to calculate the Ka or the Kb for that conjugate acid or base and compare it to the appropriate K value for whatever it is that you're comparing it to, be an acid or a base or a conjugate. So please make sure that when you are analyzing uh, conjugates that you actively go out and calculate the Ka or the Kb of that conjugate first before you complete your comparison. So hopefully this brief tutorial was helpful in how to compare the relative strength of weak acids or weak bases and ultimately compare the relative strength of their conjugates. Now keep in mind it might be helpful to refer back to this video when you come across salts, especially salts in which both ions could potentially impact the pH, because you will have to go through a similar set of calculations to compare the relative strength of the two conjugates that make up that salt. That might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but when you do get into salts, keep this video in mind. Thanks for watching.